Hey everyone, this video is a little different from what I've done so far, but essentially this is going to be a way for me to see how long it will take me to create the Terra Sprite boots. This sort of stems off of my Amphibian boots versus Terra Sprite boots video, and in that video it took me at least 3 hours to acquire the Lava Charm, and ever since then I wanted to see exactly how long would it take me to get the Terra Sprite boots if I were to make a character straight from scratch, and then just dedicate that character only to get in the boots. So that's what I'm going to do here today. I'm in the background of making a medium crimson master mode world. And this character is essentially going to try to speed run to the Terra Sprite boots. I'm not exactly the best speedrunner, but I'm trying to move as fast as I can at least. And I don't also, I also don't plan to, to fish for the Lava Charm. I'll fish for the Water Walking boots if I have to, but I don't really want to fish to the Lava Charm unless I desperately need it. But yeah, that's the point of this video essentially. I just wanted to see how fast I would be able to get the Terra Spark boots if I just dedicated a character only to collecting the pieces of it. Let me know in the comments how long do you all think it would take me to get the Terra Spark boots. I would guess maybe 5 to 6 hours at most. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Uh, starts out with me just getting some wood to um, start out with. And getting wood for a couple of reasons. Of course, the main reason I want the wood is for the torches and to also make a bow to keep me a little bit safer with the master mode enemies. Uh, since they do a lot of damage, I don't really want to like mess around against them with the copper short sword. So that's the reason why I made a bow just to keep myself a little bit safer. And after I went ahead and made a couple of materials, I then headed left because the goal is to try to reach the snow biome as soon as possible. I'll explain a little bit why later, but the most imperative thing for me at the moment is reaching the snow biome as soon as possible. So I head left. As soon as I head left a little bit, I'm greeted by a giant mound of sand that made me think there was a pyramid down there, which I wasn't quite sure because I don't have time to check that. But I kept going left because I wasn't sure if I'm on the side that has the underground desert or if it's just like a regular desert that's just, you know, a desert biome. If it's just a regular desert, then that means that the snow biome can still be on this side that I'm going towards. But if it's the underground desert, that, that means that the snow biome is always opposite the underground desert, which means I should just instantly turn back around. Unfortunately, I ran into a, a, a vulture that I tried to um, get a, a, around, and I did get around the vulture, but there was another vulture. So I thought, you know what, maybe I should just GTFO before this guy kills me. So I tried to flee from the vulture, and it kept chasing me, so I decided, you know what, I should just get as close as I can to the middle of the pyramid, and just start digging down, well, what I thought was the pyramid, and just start digging down in case it is the pyramid. If I do manage to get like a double jump or magic carpet or something, that'll help with mobility, and you know, that'll all help me just get Terra Sprite boots faster if, I, if I'm a little bit more mobile. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, so I decided, you know what, let me just go the other way. Wasn't able to confirm whether or not that was the snow biome, the underground desert I should say, but I figured maybe it's not worth dealing with vultures. On the way over to the right this time, I found a little cave, decided to just explore it a little bit, but I didn't want to go too far because I, you know, the goal is to get into the snow biome as soon as possible, so I don't have like time to detour to other places. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to see what was in the cave, and I did manage to find a wooden chest, and there was an umbrella along with some other potions. Umbrella would be very good for preventing fall damage, and I can also use it as a weapon. So it was actually worth it in this instance to come inside the cave. Afterwards, I decided to teleport back home with the recall potion and start heading over to the right. I then ran into the desert, uh, which I wasn't sure if this was the underground desert, so I just decided to keep going to the right just in case. And lo and behold, that wasn't the underground desert because I ran right into the snow biome. So you know, I went ahead and went down into the snow biome and I found a bit of topaz. I went ahead and collected the topaz because this means that we can get an early hook. We don't have a hook at the moment, so even like a crappy topaz hook is way better than not having any hook. It'll give us a little bit more mobility and it lets us traverse areas that were a little bit harder before without the topaz. And then I went ahead a little bit further into the ice cave and I found an ice chest and a life crystal. And inside of the ice chest was the ice skates, which is half of the frost spark boots that we combined with the lightning boots. So that was pretty good. That's one reason why I came in the snow biome to begin with. 
since you need either Selfish Boots, Dune Rider Boots, Hermes Boots, or Flurry Boots combined with Rocket Boots to make the Spectre Boots, I figured we could come to the Snow Biome and get the Flurry Boots and the Ice Cage which would really cut down the time that we need to spend Splunkin instead of having to like go to a different biome to get the boots either Dune Rider or Hermes and then have to come back here and also get the ice skates we can just like sort of get two birds stoned at once so now uh, if we can get the flurry boots basically we're done with the uh, Splunkin in the ice biome aside from trying to get like a weapon or like more mobility with like a double jump or something like that so as I went further into the ice caves I found a cabin which was guarded by an ice pad and there was an ice chest of course so I went ahead and I went to check out the ice chest but as I was just about to check out the ice chest here comes a fairy so I figured hey why don't I just like loot everything from the ice chest and then destroy the chest so that the fairy doesn't like you know discover the chest and I can actually use it but there was a life crystal directly above me so that plan was thwarted basically as I progressed through the ice biome, I encountered another fairy that led me to a life crystal. So I went ahead to try to collect the life crystal, but there was an icicle slime that I was trying to shoot with the frostburn arrows and the wooden bow that I had. For some reason, I decided to jump down from the safety of the ledge and I got frozen. And yeah, before I can really cover myself up, the slime got me and killed me and wasted my spelunker potion. And now I have to go back there if I want to continue spelunking through that area. Not to mention, I also dropped the money I obtained from the expedition, so now I wouldn't be able to spawn the merchant once I created a house for him. Speaking of houses, since I died and went home, I figured I might as well just start making a couple of houses in case some NPCs want to move in. There was a pink slime, so I killed it and I got back the two gold that I dropped when I died just now. So I went ahead and just finished up with the houses, nothing special. Just whatever to hold the NPCs in case they spawn, in case we need some useful NPCs to show up, such as the Goblin Tinkerer or the Merchant, Arms Dealer, etc. And then afterwards, I figured we should make a tiny elevator that will go down into either the underground or caverns, and that was just so that we can plant some of the gem coins that we've um, that we've made, the diamond gem coins and ruby gem coins that we got from the ice biome. I suppose that's also another reason why I went to the ice biome is because it's a lot easier to notice gems in that biome compared to other biomes. They're kind of just like on the walls in the ice biome. So I went ahead and decided to go make a small gem coin farm just to get started because we will need the money from the gem coins to purchase things, especially from the arms dealer like the mini shard. After a little bit of progression was made inside of the elevator, I found a natural cave and after some mining and a couple sticks of dynamite, it looked a little something like this. That's when I went ahead and planted the gem coins and we were ready to progress back to the ice biome. So I made my way back to the ice biome again. This time, I was going to try a different path in the cave. This path that I tried led me to an open area that had one of those explosive trap things that had silver ore. While I was getting the silver ore for bullets, in the bottom right hand corner I realized a undead miner was there and it illuminated the cabin for me. So I decided to go check out what was going on over there. On, on the way over to the cabin, I got into a little scuffle with two ice pads, but I went ahead and I took care of them. One of them dropped the depth meter for me, which was very good because that means I could use a depth meter to get a more precise location of where I am with regards to when lava will start showing up, which for this world would be once I'm below 3,350 feet. So I finally get down into the cabin, I pop open the chest, and I find flurry boots. All thanks to that one undead miner that illuminated the cabin for me. With that, that means I'm basically done with the ice biome. I don't really have too much of a reason to do any more exploration here, unless I want to find some more health or like a double jump or maybe a snowball cannon. So I have a decent weapon to defend myself with. Uh, while I was doing that, while all that happened, some NPCs did come back. Well, they, they spawned. We got the demolitionist, we got the merchant, we got the nurse. Demolitionist is probably the most important because I can use the bombs from him to excavate the land a little bit. And that'll make things a bit faster when trying to travel. 
and then did a little bit more splunking throughout the ice biome i found a couple of light crystals i found one next to some ice slimes then i found another one not too far away and then after i um got those two life crystals i found the uh, something kind of strange i ran into the dungeon uh i've never found the dungeon in the, in the ice biome before the snow biome so i thought it was a little bit strange but um i was a little bit bewildered by that but you know i guess anything's possible in this game sometimes and then lastly i found a fairy and that fairy led me over to one more life crystal so i went ahead and got that life crystal that life crystal will put me at about 200 HP, which will be one of the criteria I would need to have the goblin army invade after I break one of the crimson hearts in the world. Then after I get the life crystal, I decide to head on home. So at this point, I've been playing for about an hour, and after an hour, I have flurry and ice skates and 200 HP. In order for me to craft the terror spark boots, I would first have to obtain the frost spark boots as well as the lava waders and then combine those two together in order to make the terror spark boots. In this episode, I made a little bit of progress towards the frost spark boots by obtaining the ice skates as well as the flurry boots. On the other hand, with the lava waders, I haven't made any progress at all. So in the next episode, I plan to visit the jungle to acquire a couple of accessories such as the aglet and the anklet of the wind. That will lead me to the lightning boots and then i also plan to open up a crimson heart or two to make a goblin invasion happen that way i'm able to get the goblin tinkerer and purchase the tinkerer's workshop from him if you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and make sure you visit the description to check out some of my socials such as my twitter and make sure you join the discord as well thank you for watching and see you next time